technique is called the rationalizing technique. And basically we've talked about this, rationalizing the denominator, multiplying by the conjugates. Um, you know, if you guys remember the problem that we did last class period, like if we want to get rid of the radical and denominator, we multiply by the conjugate. Right? And that got rid of the radical and the denominator. So it's that same idea of thinking. Now, we don't have a radical here in the denominator. But what can happen is if we can multiply it by its conjugate, which will create a difference of two squares, then as long as we're paying attention, um, then what we can do is we can look at, by, by creating a difference of two squares, we can possibly use the Pythagorean identities. Again, it doesn't work for every problem. Not every problem is set up this way. But for some problems, it does. So let's think about this. The conjugate that would create the difference of two squares here is going to be tangent of x minus secant of x. Don't you guys agree that's now a difference of two squares? Right? Really easy to multiply, right? We like that. And then just remember, guys, it's a fraction. So if we want to keep this fraction the same, to obviously keep the balance of the equation the same, we've got to multiply the same on top and the bottom. All right. Um, now, obviously, I can see that the 2 is distributed to both terms. So I am just going to go ahead and distribute the 2 here. So when I do that, I get 2 tangent of x minus 2 secant of x all over tangent squared of x minus secant squared of x. Now, on a side note, we know that, um, what did I do, 1 plus tangent? Yeah, no, tangent. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. Well, I have tangent squared of x minus secant of x. So what if I wrote this equation as tangent squared of theta minus secant squared of theta? What would that equal? Close, not 1. Negative 1, though. Right? Because you subtract the secant and subtract the 1, right? Now, again, this doesn't work. I'm just, obviously, I have the work over there, but you guys can see where it came from. So, therefore, this is now equal to negative 1. And then I can just distribute this to a negative 2 tangent of x plus 2 secant of x. Now, do I have to rearrange it so it looks nice and pretty like that one? No, it's perfectly fine, right? It's like negative 2 plus 5 rather than 5 minus 2. Perfectly fine. You don't need to rearrange it. This is a preferred method of writing it. Usually, we like to write the positive in front. But it's OK. As far as verifying the identity, you're good. Yes? Um, what did we do on the denominator that got its negative 1 thing when you read it out? I subtracted secant on both sides and then subtracted a 1 on both sides. It's because it's tangent squared plus 1 equals, like again, if this is your identity, if this equals negative 1, if you add 1 to both sides and then add a secant squared, you get tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, which is that identity, right? So again, by utilizing this conjugate to create the difference of two squares, you can verify your identity. 